their questions and have a great time. Now I'm going to hand over the session to the man himself. Everyone please welcome Greg Hawks. Hey, Kaylee, thank you so much. It is a pleasure to be here. And what great content has already come forth through the panel, through the conversations, through the interviews. So I am just so grateful that I get to be here with all of you. And just to consider a uh, perspective in my experience in the last 18 months, I've had quite the opportunities to produce hybrid conferences, produce virtual conferences, MC at virtual conferences, and of course, speak at virtual conferences. And so just thought I would bring to you in these 15 minutes that I have a perspective that I am certain will cause your virtual or hybrid experience to elevate in a way that causes audience, both in person, and behind the screen to love the experience. I have been on a mission to cause people sitting behind this screen to say that was as good as or better than being in person. And so I've got a few thoughts on how you and I can design a conference that uh, looks a little different than how we do in person. Pre-pandemic, when people put together a conference, they would build a conference schedule. In today's world, just having a functional schedule is no longer effective. Just like when we try to replicate what we did in person and put it into the virtual world, turns out to be clunky, disengaging, and not at all what it was in person. The same is true when you build your conference around an architecture that is used for an in-person gathering without considering the consequence from behind the screen. So today we're looking at day designing and I'm just gonna give you three different thoughts and ideas about how you can approach it that I think will be useful to you, helpful to you and um, that sort of thing. So I just, sorry, I got distracted by the chat happening right there. The first is, I want you to think about what keeps you engaged as a human when you're watching something behind the, on a screen. Now, earlier in the conference that we're having here, it was referenced about Netflix and binging and that conferences aren't just a one way. They aren't just a, a watch and observe, but they're designed to engage. And yet, Understanding what causes people to go, I'm going to sit here all Saturday morning, all Saturday afternoon, all Saturday night, and just not move because I am so captivated by what's taking place on the screen. If we want our audiences to remain with us, understanding the philosophical reasons that draws people, that captures our imagination, that keeps our attention connected understanding those foundational principles when we look at creating and crafting our design for the day, two, three days, however long your conference is, is essential because then it gives us a way to look through it and see where these factors will be in play. So there's four of them that I will just give you. And, and I refer to it as, you know, just pour the honey on this thing. We got to sweeten it up with some honey in our designing of the day. So the first one is, of course, humorous. Whether you have entertainers, you have individuals who are entertaining, you are incorporating videos that are funny, there is so much access to humor these days, both from an individual, clips, um, all kinds of things you can create in the moment or that you have pre-recorded, or that you just pull off it is. How are you intentionally placing humor throughout the day and or how are you utilizing individuals who are humorous that keep people laughing and smiling? It's, it's shocking how if you're sitting there and you just smile, how much more willing you're just, you're willing to sit and listen longer for that hope of another dopamine hit, for the hope of another chuckle, giggle, laugh that causes you to feel good. And so designing days has to incorporate some humor. And so the um, 
Next one that I put is unexpected. You know, the idea of when we catch people off guard, I have found in many of our breaks when we've designed our virtual and hybrid conferences that what takes place in those breaks has a lot of ability to keep people connected. I was just at a hybrid conference last week in Atlanta. And we were so fortunate, had a great production crew there, and we were able to take my virtual emceeing mobile. And so we got our camera set up, got it connected with the system, and I was, much to the crowd's um, surprise, able to run around both the surprise of the live audience where I could come and talk to them in person, very unexpected. They thought they were just done with their keynote session or walking out. I could go to the exhibitor hall where the, the virtual audience who had a great access to the virtual exhibitors, they didn't know they were gonna get to see and talk and I could talk to the different exhibitors, very unexpected. And what the unexpected does is it keeps people wondering what could happen next? I better stick around. And then the third of honey is need, is the what do people actually need? I play a lot in the SHRM world, the HR community, of lots of HR conferences around the nation, and they always have lawyers, lots of lawyers hanging out in those SHRM conferences. And it is amazing how captivating lawyers can be on subject matters that are so dry and to the rest of us that are not HR professionals, like, oh my goodness. And yet these folks in the audience are just hanging on every word because it's needed solutions that they're looking for, both from a virtual behind the screen perspective and an in-person perspective. It keeps people wanting more and keeps them connected with it. And then the last one is what I just call interesting, where random experiences, whether it's the content that someone's sharing, whether it's the stories that people bring, whether again, what happens a lot in between the sessions that's in the virtual world with the breaks that people think, well, that's curious. I didn't know that. I didn't understand that. Or I didn't know we could do a yoga break this early in the morning and have it pre-recorded and we could all do our yoga together like many of you have done or we learn how to make salsa or, or we mix drinks in the afternoon. That's interesting. I didn't know all that was there. And so keeping it interesting and being intentional about looking at the design of your days and if those four elements are in there, how long it can keep the audience tracking with you. Yeah, I have found it's amazing despite the rumors of Zoom fatigue and how people just don't want to look at a screen. When you drop these elements and you're intentional about placing them within the day over the course of days, it's captivating. People want to come back for more. People are excited about being a part of it, whether virtually or in person, because these elements have been placed in there and it takes a conference producer, takes a conference organizer, takes the meeting professionals to look and think about how they're presenting the material, not just as an in-person schedule that we built, but in designing the day for the virtual and the in-person audience. And what I have found is that whether you're designing for virtual or designing for in-person or designing for hybrid, all of those take a different approach. Virtual and hybrid have some similarities. In-person hybrid has some similarities because of the crossover, but they all take a, just a little bit of intentionality with creativity that really sets you on target for designing something. So the second element I want to look at is the actual agenda. And so we are so used to thinking about conference scheduling and uh, designing, you know, building a schedule that the agenda is typical 9 a.m. keynote, 9 to 1030, you know, a welcome opening break, then breakout session, break, breakout session, lunch, breakout session, break, breakout session or panel, then ending keynote. And it's just this very blocked, maybe a 60 to 90 minute window, 15 minute break, then a 45 to 60 minute session, then another 15 or 10 minute break, and then another, or maybe we'll go to the exhibitors. And it's very 
right angled. It's very blocked in how it works. In a hybrid and virtual situation, that block scheduling is just really uh, difficult to keep people's hearts and minds with you all day long. So I put message lengths. We've we're so used to a 45 minute to 60 minute message, even though we live in a TED talk world in the virtual space, because people are getting credits. People were trying to, we, it, it takes a lot to get all the speakers pre-recorded and loaded and looking good and all. So there's a lot to it. And yet there are ways to utilize message links to really build a design and structure a day that keeps people wanting more. So whether you start with the, the foundational opening keynote and it's the 60 to 90 minute with all the welcomes and then how you do your breaks, we'll talk about those in a second. And then I, I have found that the longer the day goes, the shorter the messages <laughs> can be that keeps people feeling refreshed in it. Listen, everybody at two o'clock wants to take a nap. We had lunch, we're listening to somebody. I'm just tired of sitting here. Whether it's in person or whether it's virtual, where they are wanting to uh, get engaged in a way. And so just shortening your messages. We've done conferences where we had people live in the, in the, in the studio doing three minute quick hits. We've done pre-recorded for 15 to 20 minutes and let them have multiple options anywhere like that. that you can be thoughtful using our breaks to, for our exhibitors, using our breaks to have fun with the audience, using our breaks in a way that again, you can do the same thing. You have a 15 minute break first, and then maybe you go to a 10 minute and then maybe you tighten up your breaks as the day goes on and you use the different timing elements to keep the day moving. Because at the end of the day, what you're looking for is momentum boosters to keep hitting throughout the day where people are like, Oh, I'm feeling down. Whoa. What was that? I think I'm ready to keep going for some more. That was unexpected. That was funny. That was good. Ooh, I like that. And I put a host on here because as you heard earlier on the panel, hosts are so essential. They really are who keep the thread tied through the entire online experience while in person. Again, the virtual, the hybrid conference I was at, we had a, a live host and we had a virtual host and we used both of them in tandem to work together for both audiences that were engaged. And so I would encourage you to think about your structure flow and be mindful about those momentum boosters. And then the last element that I thought would be useful for you to consider in designing your day is how are we creating value? And I just throw this word access on there because often over the course of these last 12 to 18 months, there's been a... There, there's been not resistance, but particularly with exhibitors and sponsors, even as the world has evolved, still a hesitancy to recognize the true value. And I am a firm believer from both experience after experience after experience that the virtual hybrid scenario is way more valuable for the speaker, for the audience, and for the exhibitor, simply because of this word access. You can get on, and I'm sure this how this platform works, you can get on a week or two before the conference even begins. Now listen, in an in-person gathering only, the exhibitor shows up, the speaker shows up, the day they speak, or the two or three days that they're exhibiting, they sit at their table, and that's it. Whoever walks by their table, whoever takes their chotskis, whoever fills out their card and sticks it in there, does the bingo stamp, that's all they get. But in a virtual world, honey, they can show up a week before. Ver exhibitors can host events pre-event, during the event, and after the event, all on the platform. It's amazing how much value exists for audiences, exhibitors, and speakers in a virtual space if there will be creativity, if there will be intentionality. You know, we've had such great success with it. We threw together a little hybrid guide that you can go. I've put our QR codes and that you can download, but it's, there's nine different design elements that make for designing a hybrid conference so essential. And we've heard about one of them is platform, one of them is production, one of them is host. There's lots of elements that cause a hybrid experience to be successful designing the day is at the center of it all and being mindful about it. And so it's been a fast 15 minutes, but that's how we like to roll. And I'm so grateful. So I'll put this up. If you would love to connect on LinkedIn, I'd love that we're broadcasting this on LinkedIn, or if you'd like to get a weekly letter I send about 
personal growth. And finally, the guide itself. If you want to hit that QR code, you can do that and download that for free and just let that be an extra resource on what's already so much great content being delivered here. So thank you very much. Once a minute game again, my name is Greg Hawks. Our website is hawksagency.com. And it's been a pleasure to speak with you. I hope your hybrid or virtual event is a success. Thank you.